about the AMG disorders and facial pain. So the uh, main difference I did regarding about the disorder happen in the TMJ and what are the clinical features and managing for the TMJ ankylosis and what are the disorders happening in the TMJ and how it can be managed through conservative and physically. So we are going to brush up the preview second day topics like what do you mean pain? Pain is an unpleasant sensory experience produced by arising from a specific location of the body and frequently associated with the axial or potential tissue damage. So there are other things you know there is a no perception is the electrical transmission of the noxious stimulus from the site of injury to higher brain centers through by air delta or polymodal fibers. A delta fibers is a minor large diameter, fast conducting, sharp jabbing shooting pain. So it's like uh, the sharp shooting pain through the A delta and the dull ache through the sicker responder. The pathway of the pain is through the non surface and it goes to the afferent neuron where growth rate of the pain. It goes to the opposite of the sympathetic tract ascending and goes to the thalamus to the somatosensory cortex and the limbic system from the midbrain and the brain stem descending from morphe the pathways. So, already you studied in the first year and second year. So, the pain path is the orofacial region to the not visual, like a uh, from fibers to the Trigonal nerve, it is gang, uh, yes, ganglion, yes, ganglion, ascending from the pons of to the upper cervical spinal cord. It is called the triangular brainstem sensory nerve nuclear complex. From this nuclear complex, symbols are uh, related to the higher centers. So, mostly you know the trigonal nerve, the face. So what are the common forms of the orofacial region? There are a lot of pains seen associated in the facial region. That is usually headache, toothache, sinus, sinus pain, uh, pain on the eye, cellular gland pain, muscle pain, joint pain, neurology. Commonly we can see in the sinus pain, toothache, and uh, neurology and muscle pain. These are the commonly th things noticed and also the and the TMJ pain. So, the orofacial pain is classified into orofacial pain of the external cranial region like dental, periodontal, mucosal, salivary gland, TMJ, paranasal sinus. Primary neurologists like trigonal, dorsopharyngeal, posterior hepatic, and Ramsey Hutt syndrome. Vascular pain through the migraine, cluster headache, joint cell arthritis. Referred pain is a Ocular pain, angina pain, and to a biofacial pain dysfunction symptom. And the last two is the psychoanalysis. After all, all this means the orofacial primary vascular referred all this we can never notice. Then the next pain is called the psychology pain. That's the atypical facial pain and the burning most of the top these are the things. But the common thing is if you can never identify what type of a pain then only the last one is a psychogenic pain so the tmj disorder is first of all the tmj anatomy means it's called a diarthral and inglomo or sinovial joint that already you know the contains the uh, articular disc articular cartilage and the space between inferior and superior compartments are there uh, and then capsule ligaments these are the common things we can see in that joint sinoidal fluid so it's called uh, uh, you can see the material uh, mandibular fossa articular eminence appendic fossa everything 
So the card like and this one here, there is a lining of the mass for this all channel doing loads. The team there are two types of tissues are there. There is called the article cartilage and synovial. This base one of these two stuck systems is called synovial cavity. And which is filled with the synovial fluid. So if there will be less in the synovial, there will be pain will be more. The article disc is composed of the dense fibrous constitution and is non vascular and non inverted and adaptation that allows it to resist the pressure. So whenever there will be, if you are going to uh, chewing food or this, you know, there will be impact will occur on the joint. So it will prevents uh, a trauma to the uh, uh, fossa and the articular medial. So there will be the disc will protect all these things. The article the disc can be divided into three general regions are viewed from the lateral spur that uh, anterior band and the central intimate zone and the posterior. So you can see there is the anterior band, posterior band, everything. Three ligaments are there. This is called a collateral, capsular, and the temporomandibular. Consider the functional ligaments because they are the major anatomy components of the joint. The two other ligaments that are called the spinomandibular and stylomandibular ligaments are the, are the accessory ligaments because uh, they are attached to the osseous structures and the some distance from the joints they also have the some degree as a passive distance on mandibular motions. So the total how many ligaments are the total known is by the three ligaments are called collateral, capsular and temporal mandibular ligaments. And the accessory ligaments like the spinomandibular and the stylomandibular. So the main thing of the TMJ disorder, like you no, know, first we will check the the chief complaint of the patient. How long, how when you uh, the pain will start, how long will the duration, everything you ask. Then the onset and the location, where the particular point, and the character of the pain is a dull pain or sharp shooting pain, everything. And it's the aggravating factor is if you are going to do any type of uh, exercise, then only it will aggravate or not. Then any relieving factors we will do or not, like that. And in the patient having any pre or past history of the consult of the treatment, mostly they will went for the uh, neuro physicians. We might be able for the ENT. Like there, a lot of people are associated with the pain. So the external physical signs and dimensions of the uh, TMJ is uh, then musculative system includes the teeth, supporting cells, the mus muscles of musculature and the TMJ. To affect the evaluation of the disorder, sound understanding the clinical appearance and function of the muscular function is necessary. So when you check about the patient's TMJ movements, then only you can find a rule out the uh, what type of a pain the patient have. So upon when going for the dental examination, we first will go the mobility, check the mobility and right now for parental experience on throwing a pain, osteoporosis, hypersomatosis, we will check it out and uh, uh, tooth wear, abstraction and occlusal examination, centric and eccentric occlusal contact, the patient having any occlusal high, high points or something like that, you go and check it out. So what are the types in you know, the disorders on the condyle? It's called uh, developmental is the traumatic is neoplastic. Developmental means a agenesis, hypoplasia, hypoplasia. Traumatic is by fracture or anglosis, previous issue of uh, fracture. And the the benign and American area having uh, neoplasm happen on that particular area. The disorders happen on the synovial apparatus in the general joint. There is acute inflammation or chronic inflammation that is due to trauma, chronic through the material arthritis and chronic arthritis. So, radiative arthritis. No? So, this happens when the patient has a sudden onset, means the patient having heating uh, of a moderator. The patient is uh, fall down on the floor, so suddenly it might happen to a team. That's really trauma. 
and uh, chronic inflammation means in previous year history of trauma happened then they become satellite is like that then the disorders when they mention the displacement or osteoarthrosis there is a rushing for the production and the disorder associated with the structural is uh, centrally mediated myalgia yeah, idiopathic and uh, locally mediated myalgia so these are the four types we can see in the TMG so the classification in the thing it is like due to the extensive fractures masculinity function like the protective muscle splinting uh, impedious masculinity muscle function inflammation mysticis due to trauma it's got trauma to arthritis fracture in the discrete uh, arrangement that is tendonitis myospasm contraction or failure to muscles myofibrotic contraction First, uh, due to the internal factors like uh, trauma, then means the dislocation, sublocation, hematosis, blood in the joint, intercapsular, extracapsular fracture, internal disc displacement like the internal disc displacement without, without the reduction. Arthritis like osteoarthrosis, rheumatoid arthritis, infection arthritis. Developmental defects like uh, uh, from the birth, the condyle, aplasia, hypoplasia, hypoplasia, and a basic condyle. And uh, having the angulosis, neoplasmal like opinion, and the malignant and things we can see. So there are two types intrinsic and extrinsic factors. So we'll go over the myofascial pain one dysfunction syndrome. So, first one the diagnostic is you know that it be patient having unilateral dull, uh, aching facial uh, pain that is poorly localized and moderate to severe limitation of the mouth opening and they will see no TNG tenderness muscle tenderness will be there and there will be no any radiographic changes on the TNG so these are the main things you notice so normally there will be predominantly we can notice in females uh, that we can we don't know if it happened more in females it is age group around 20 to 40 years of the age groups and the frequently history of the other psychophysiologic uh, disease and often some chronic depression and multiple care providers and difficulty in accepting the psychologic and it will end so these are the main things we can notice in the empathy so what is this main theory is then uh, the psychological system that leads to the muscular hyperactivity and the same, uh, muscle fatigue and leads to myosarcoma and the myofunctional pain dysfunction syndrome. It's the main theory so that is mostly is due to the stress factor. So how can we treat the patient? First we will go for the uh, accurate diagnosis. Is it a MPDS or not? Then using the do the home therapy, we can take the pair of medication like a pain and the anxiety protocol we can do and we can do the bite up pains to stress uh, and there will be physical therapy so physiotherapy we can do and relaxation therapy and we'll do the post psychological counseling. These are the mostly things we'll do for this type of cases. Home therapy means the sick of the cleansing habits of patient uh, biting too much pressure you know, or reduce that pain and limitation of the jaw movements and ask the patient to eat the soft tight food or like the hard food and uh, more sheer and massage on the jaw muscles then can uh, reduce the pain. Medications like normally the vision uh, we can give yes, the uh, NSAIDs and uh, patient uh, the muscle relaxation for the for the sleep, normally, as long as the common drugs we can use for the muscle So, is the patient having any allergic to this for the NSAID? No, don't give the NSAID drugs. So, you can see in this diagram how that. Uh, in, uh, dislocation of the TMJ will happen. <coughs> that means you open the mouth more wider. So, you can 
see that uh, DMJ is for moving forward uh, about from the uh, join so that what will happen now it will dislocate so what the person is the person from the left the lemon also see the lemon is mostly the lemon architecture means so mostly it's seen on the uh, depends upon the anatomy that relates to the body and dislocation so what are the causes of the danger there will be first on the intrinsic factors like the yawning vomiting wire opening and the seizure disorders mostly the patient will open the mouth to the yawning and the wide opening <coughs> essential factors like a trauma is there are occlusion factors can lead to tissue disorders second the anthrax trauma means say in your intuition or or ga and uh, use of uh, gagging during the GA procedure, dental extraction is the uh, present junction which is mandible. The crucial part is the human operation and the loss of dentition. Uh, the connective tissue disorder is like that uh, hypermotility symptoms and uh, most of the symptoms that are associated are uh, uh, with the team pattern. The second is the habit of dislocation, location and happy of uh, uh, but sometimes it's not normal the patient open the mouth the bit dislocation will happen and the patient has drugs like an anti-psychiatric drugs and phenotypes means these are the things also related to dislocation you can see the diagram how the team is dislocated from which they are having come out from the mandala force or so that relates to the discourse is moved to forward and the dislocate and the mind will can never forward back to the normal position <coughs> so how will you re reduce the danger to the person first uh, uh, both your hands uh, uh, place your pose on the occlusions of the mandible on the molar region place your thumb on the both sides support the mandible and pull downward backward and upward you can see in the diagram how they are doing uh, this thing first uh, place your thumb with your, on the molar through a course pressure upward downward backward and upward what this argument thing is uh, use of a sclerosis imagine like uh, sodium is later uh, sodium tetrahydrate and sulfate sodium oxide so the sending of the limits over from the temporal associate that's a very important thing and capsule ligation capsule taking procedure alteration the musculature all these things will do the surgical mostly uh, we will do the patient constant that is more uh, necessity the patient having chronic disease then only you go for the surgical management is the angular resolution of the DMG. Let's you know that it's too angular. It's particular over fibrous or bony unilateral bilateral partial complexion. So the etiology is due to the trauma on the childhood, infection, inflammation and systemic disease. These are the main etiological factors due to the angular So what the pathogen is the trauma happened to the DMG? That was the acceleration of the brain to the joint space and leads to hemarthrosis. So what will happen is uh, that leads to the calcification and rotation of the joint space. That leads to the communication and animation beyond the joint space to involve the sigmoid notch, sigmoidic arch coronary process. So it's become a fused bony mass. May include the lateral table brain and the spine of the spinal bone. So what's the question like uh, type 1 is here? Uh, if the contact head is flattened and uh, deformed and the close approximation of the upper joint space, tense fibrous adhesion are uh, present within the joint and the restriction of the movement is due to the fibrous in and around the joint. Type 2 is the flattened contact in the close approximation of the planar fossa. Bony fusion of the outer aspect of the articular surface, either ideally and posteriorly limited the small area. 
Type 3 is the angular axis, usually results from the medial displaced fracture conductivity bone between the ramus of the medial and the segmentic arch. Type 4 is the wider bone ridge extends the ramus and the segmentic arch that completely replace the anatomy of the area. So what are the clinical features we can notice in the What are the things we can notice in the unilateral cases? Unilateral the facial asymmetry. Deviation of the chin and mandible to the affected side, hyperplasia of the mandible on the affected side, unaffected side flat and elongated due to the normal growth, well defined and the antigonal noise on the affected side, limited mouth opening, classroom and occlusion of the posterior prostate on the affected side. These are the common things noticed in the unilateral angulosis. Go for the bilateral angulosis, the mouth opening is resistant and the severe micrognathia called bed face, look like bed face. Antigonal notch present bilaterally, classroom malversion, crowding and the impacted teeth, and anterior open bite. So, the main symptoms we can notice called bed face, but the classroom malversion we can notice on the posture. What's the treatment of ankylosis? The first thing is to release the ankylotic mast and the creation of gap to mobilize the joint. Creation of the function joint to reconstruct the joint and to restore the vertical height of the joint to prevent the recurrence to restore the normal facial growth pattern to improve the aesthetic and rehabilitate the patient that is very important otherwise again the chance of the cancer will be more so the surgical techniques we are doing is the condylectomy of cutting off the Cabin's protocol. In Cabin's protocol, what thing is very important? You memorize the Cabin's protocol also. First one is the aggravated restriction of the centimeter and equilateral coronoidectomy and temporalis myotomy. And it will be contralateral coronoidectomy with the in the incisor opening AS 35 mm to increase the mouth opening. Lining of the glenoid fascia, uh, glenoid fossa with the temporalis fascia, and recurs construction of the ramus with the posterior frontal graft and early mobilization and aggressive physical therapy. This is the protocol for the TMG ankylosis. Mostly, these will go for through the incision like a prior to incision. If the base is the bilateral, we we'll go for the uh, by coronary incision also we can do, but mostly they will do the precure incision and open the arterial and remove the anglotic mass and remove the coronary and lining with the temporary fascia and the postural autograph and physiotherapy. Next one is the test mass, which will be the infection, trauma, inflammation, matrices, ossification, detonated mass, neurology disorders, I take this mass. Papers. There are a lot of things are there. If you're going for the infection, also there will be this mass will be happened. Next one is the KMJ internal dearrangement. That means the cleaning of the articular disc. That is a very important thing. So what is in the internal dearrangement? Is the dissection of the internal as well as the KMJ? In which an abnormal relationship exists between the disc and the condyle fossa and the anticlinum. That means that there will be slipping action of the disc from the uh, fossa and the anticlinum. So that's the main thing. So what are the associations? It's called semiotis, intercapsular scaring or attraction between the joint hemorrhage, fibrous cartilage, metaplasia, dystrophic classification and also arthritis. When I told you it's called the uh, microdroma association with the paroxysm and other parafunctional uh, functional habits like uh, abnormality of the joint. Microdroma is a history of trauma and osseous morphologic changes. Disc displacement resulting in the stretching or tearing the retro discal tissue for the degenerative changes and pain during the function limited oral or ma or mouth opening muscularity and the cervical tenderness <coughs> <coughs> so the classification of the internal dynamics is andro 
and it will display its index that returns to the normal position during the mouth opening and it will dismiss this that does not return to the normal position during the mouth opening and addition of the disk to the joint socket as below so mostly sometimes that uh, disk will come back sometimes the uh, disk will slip out from the area you can see in this diagram how how it looked like that means when you went to open for the figure a the when you normal position the disk is uh, annually placed and when you open the mouth is slip off to the no and early and the TNG is to hit so there will be uh, more pain will occur on that player actually the TMJ when you open the disc also will move at the same time then there is no problem if the disc also moves uh, slip off to open the joint space no? so there will be hitting of the condyle and patient having more pain the TMJ locking also the same thing the disc is placed uh, and early and the team is to the uh, mariposa you can see on the next uh, what is the main difference you can see the normal position the jaw closed now how it look like the disc is in the normal position when you open the mouth the disc also move and when you close the disc also return to the normal position but when the clicking you know that disc is displays and early and you open the mouth the disc will come uh, the team condyle will come to the condyle and the disc on the name same but the problem when you return back now the condyle will hit the manual fossa when the locking time there will be slip off it will never return back uh, means there will be no any connection between the cartilage and the condyle <coughs> So we case cultivation of the stage one is really reducing displacement of the equipment, late to reducing displacement, non-reducing displacement, equipment subacute, non-reducing displacement chronic, non-reducing displacement chronic with the osteoarthritis. So the main thing is management. There are two types, the conservative and surgical management. So conservative management means the first way to the psychological approach and the process of splints we can use and antidepressants and painkiller like uh, NSAIDs, muscle relaxants and the intra-articular steroid injections also we can use. These are first line of treatment we will do. If the patient can never control their uh, problems, then only we will go for the surgical and then no arthrosynthesis and leverage, arthroscopy, disc repositioning, disc removal, disc uh, removal with uh, replacement, condylectomy and condylectomy. So, these are the main things you can see in the TMJ. So, in this topic, we studied about the How you manage is very important. These are the things pain and your disorder. Thank you.